Hey guys, Ashley with Amare. Hello. So today we are going to talk about something. Something that you guys freak out about, ask me about, and your doctor really can't give you any information on. So dog ears, right? So like what, what is a dog ear? All right. So when, now here's the thing. First of all, we have to understand what dog ears are. Dog ear is a term used to describe your hip area or your flank area where it's like an overlap or like a like a patch of swelling on your hips, right? That overhangs. So where your love handle area is, more towards the front, sometimes towards the back, there's a little like pouch there, right? So that's what they call your dog ears. It's just an area of either overhanging skin or fat or swelling, which we'll get into, um, which is on the sides of your hips, right? Sometimes they're called your saddlebags. It's that area. So dog ears can happen not just from a tummy tuck, but also from liposuction. Um, it also happens from cool sculpting, anywhere that surgery was done. It is most commonly seen in tummy tucks. So usually dog ears, they say when the tummy tuck incision, it's the ends on the sides of the tummy tuck incision. There are a lot of theories out there as to why dog ears happen, why you get that puckering on the sides of your incision that's swollen, um, why, you know, after a year, two years, it still doesn't go away. And they say it's fat that the surgeon left out or that the suture on the ends of your incision was pulled too tight things like that. Um, there are a lot of different descriptions, explanations, and all of that. In this video, we are going to talk about from a manual lymphatic drainage swelling post-operative perspective, what dog ears are, how to get rid of them, all of that stuff. But this is coming from a non-surgeon perspective. So every surgeon has their own explanation as to why it happens. Like I said, sometimes the tummy tuck incision not going far back enough or the sutures, you know, not healing properly. The incision's not healing properly on the ends of your tummy tuck incision. Problems with healing and not closing properly. Tons of different reasons. I'm going to give you in this video from a healing perspective my reasons in my practice of what I've seen as far as how we've gotten rid of dog ears non-surgically, why they happen, when we see them starting to happen, what we do to help get rid of them and prevent them, things like that. So again, please keep in mind this video is from a manual lymphatic drainage post-operative perspective, not a surgeon perspective, and your surgeon is going to have a different answer and a different reason for why dog ears happen. So, First things first, I'm going to start off by reading um, this medical journal to you. It's an abstract from the website, Plastic Surgery and Reconstructive Surgery Global Open. They've got a lot of good articles on here. Um, it, this is a, you know, abstract review of cutaneous dog ear deformities after surgery. So it says, dog ear, a characteristic bunching of excess tissue formed during wound closure, wound closure, is a common unsightly problem in cutaneous surgery. It may present as a cosmetic concern or a source of physical discomfort. Several management techniques have been reported, but it is unclear which approach is the most effective or whether outcomes vary with surgical situations. Um, and then it goes through the whole report saying this report assesses the best practices for dog ear management. So some of those managements include surgery. A lot of things, if you start reading, they'll say massage, just massage the dog ears and they'll go away because it's a healing problem. Some surgeons or people on the internet, whoever tell you it's because the skin was pulled too tight on the ends and didn't heal properly. Either way, it is a healing issue with your surgery. Now, surgical correction for dog ears for that extra skin on the side is going to be determined by you and your surgeon. So that is something you would have to talk to them specifically about. I am just here to explain what it is and what's going on. So let's look at some dog ear pictures. The only seen one. So this is the dog ear area. This is your flank area. Notice the incision is over here. So in this case, like I was saying with liposuction, this is a pocket of swelling or something that's not healing properly on that dog ear area. So this is not specifically because the skin was pulled too tight. This is something that happened from lipo or cool sculpting like I've seen commonly, this is a dog ear. That is what it looks like. It's a pocket of swelling. Sometimes they say it's a pocket of tissue. In our practice, it is absolutely a pocket of swelling. Once we do manual lymphatic drainage, proper compression, that swelling goes away. This is another picture on an incision of a dog ear. A dog ear in this type of situation was surgically corrected. Again, it was a pocket of swelling and then they 
made a nice long incision here and corrected it, but there is still swelling above the incision line right here. So that swelling is still present, but that dog ear is gone. Now, this is a tummy tuck surgery that happened and then correcting the dog ear itself. So this little thing is also considered a dog ear and they excise it or they cut it off and stitch it up. Now that doesn't mean the swelling will not come back in this incision area, but this is the excess skin part that didn't heal right that they're cutting off. That is what that is. So now that we've seen dog ears and we know what they look like, let's talk about it. All right, so liposuction. Liposuction, as we saw in that first picture on the side, you can still get those pockets of swelling. Tissue was removed. Your body is going to try and fill that space with swelling to make new tissue because it doesn't know that it was purposefully removed. So a lot of times when you start getting dog ears, it's when you're swelling, right? And then a lot of your swelling will come down. So let's say you had a tummy tuck with liposuction to your flanks or your sides and your back. So your tummy tuck incision starts to heal, your swelling starts to come down from the ribs all the way to your belly button and then down to your incision, but you may still have that pocket of swelling on your sides. Couple things that are causing this, your compression. If you are in a binder and that area is not properly being compressed, if you're putting the binder too high and you don't have any compression around that dog ear area on the sides of your hips, fluid is going to pull there, causing a dog ear. Now, a lot of times with a tummy tuck, because you have drains, you are in a binder for maybe three weeks um, till your drains come out and then they usually get you into a garment. I see and I know a lot of surgeons that will put you in a Spanx instead of an actual Faha or compression garment and have you use a binder over the Spanx for compression. But again, using that binder, if we're not putting that low enough, that's going to cause some dog ears. Here's the other thing. If you are pulling that binder extra super duper super super tight and squeezing yourself, you will cause a fluid pooling fibrosis situation. If you don't know what fibrosis is, I have tons of videos on that on my YouTube. Go check them out. It's what happens when fluid gets trapped because it's being squished or you're having caffeine, dehydrating yourself, things like that, and your lymph fluid, your swelling is starting to stagnate and get stuck in one area and starts to become really thick and hard. So again, with a binder, if we're pulling it a million sizes too tight where it's cutting into us in that area, it can also cause that dog ear effect. Now, when we talk about healing, let's say, so that's like fresh out of surgery, right? Normal swelling can cause dog ears. Not having compression in that area can cause dog ears. The last picture we saw where that skin is grown out and puckered like that, that usually happens a year, eight months when the healing happens and the swelling sits under the incision and is pushing on the incision and the skin is trying to heal and then you get that puckering because that puckering is the skin that was being pushed by the swelling like this, picture this to be swelling, pushing on it, causing that skin to grow out instead of it growing flat to your body. So again, proper compression with proper foams will help that. The other thing that happens, Sometimes with a tummy tuck, we're wearing a board. That board is going to be really hard and sit on your abdomen and push all the fluid from this area to any other open area, which if you don't have any foams on your sides, if you are wearing a binder, fluid's gonna find the easiest space to leak into. You're basically one bag of water after surgery. You're one big bag of swelling, squishy water that's trying to heal. So fluid's gonna find its way into those areas. The dog ears happen to be one of those areas. So that is how I've seen it happen because I see you guys usually that first week after a tummy tuck all the way up until your six week, eight week, three month mark of your tummy tuck. And I watch the progression of the dog ears happen based on when you come in, how they're already happening. And this is something you guys are super worried about because we got the tummy tuck to be super flat. And then we worry that, oh, maybe the incision wasn't long enough. Well, as we saw in that one photo, even when the incision is there, you will still have swelling pooling above and below it. Your swelling is there to help you heal. The problem comes in is when it gets stuck. When your swelling gets stuck in those areas is what's happening and causing that dog ear, that accumulation, that pocket of swelling. Then, after a year, the skin heals around it, but you still have that pocket. And your incision heals, but you still have that pocket. So, non-surgical options for correcting dog ears. Proper foams. I have a video on what proper foams are and what they should be like. Polyurethane medical grade foams. 
Um, proper compression. So maybe you're wearing the binder too high. Maybe it's too tight. Maybe you need a compression garment, a faha as they call them. Maybe that compression garment or faha is too stretchy and it's more like a Spanx and it's not containing those areas. And then manual lymphatic drainage. So manual lymphatic drainage gets the body to reabsorb that swelling from that area so that your skin heals flat, so that your back heals flat, so that that swelling isn't stuck in a pocket anymore. And that's what's causing the dog ears. So getting regular manual lymphatic drainage massages with someone who is a certified MLD practitioner or CLT, um, the difference is just the amount of course hours and what you learn. But MLD is what you want not body contouring, wood therapy, all those other things. You want something that is specifically for re-rooting and reabsorbing the swelling so you can pee it out. So someone who is trained to know how to reroute the fluid from those areas to your lymph nodes to get your body to reabsorb them is going to help tremendously because then your body is saying, oh, okay, this doesn't need to be here and we're rerouting it up the anastomoses on the sides of your body towards your lymph nodes, your armpits, your hips, and getting your body to reabsorb that so it doesn't get stuck in that area. That's all it is. What the foams do is help in your garment add that micro stimulation 24 seven to get your body's lymphatic system stimulated so that fluid starts getting absorbed. And again, having a proper garment that's not too tight or too loose, the Goldilocks syndrome, too tight or too loose, properly compressing you and holding you is going to help keep the fluid out of that area. That's that's what garments do. Garments do not shape you. Garment, just the garment alone, will not completely make your dog ear disappear. You have to actually get the fluid out of that area. The garment does not get fluid out. The garment is there to hold that space that we just made, that hole that we just made in your body. It's meant to close the space so fluid doesn't continue to get into that space so that it heals flat. So behind your incision, on your dog ear area. So having a garment is important, but having some sort of lymphatic stimulation, whether it's MLD or you're using the foams or whatever it is, is going to be the thing that gets rid of that swelling. It gets your body to pee it out. So that's why if you look up dog ears on Google and solutions for dog ears, surgeons will say that it goes away with massage. Just by rubbing it yourself, yes, it can help, but we're not actually rerouting the fluid by doing that. We're not working with those lymph vessels to get them to suck fluid out of that area. We're just rubbing that area, stimulating the lymph vessels. So it may help over time if you're doing that self-massage. If it's just like a little dog ear, if it's a tiny little pucker, over the course of maybe a couple weeks, it will help quite a bit. But if you're super worried about your dog ears and they're like kind of extreme, like that one photo we saw where they're hanging off your sides, you're going to want to make sure you get the proper foams. We have those in our post-op shop, um, amaripostopshop.com. The link is in the bio. You're going to want to make sure you have a proper compression garment that's actually holding that area nice and firm, snug like a hug. We don't want it to be spandexy or elastic, and we don't want it to be hard and cutting into like a board or a binder. And you're going to want to make sure you're doing specifically targeted manual lymphatic drainage massages. So again, finding someone who knows how the anatomy of the lymphatic system works. There is a very long speech we're not going to get into about how when you do a tummy tuck, your body processes fluid in a different way. It doesn't just go down to your hip, inguinal lymph nodes, or up to your armpit. You have to reroute fluid in a specific way because the anatomy of your body has changed. So part of the dog ear situation is the fluid that would normally be on your hip would go right into your inguinal lymph nodes. But all of that tissue that the lymph vessels were attached to has now been cut off. Everything from your belly button right now on a healthy body, everything from your belly button and below drains into your inguinal or your hip lymph nodes. Everything that's belly button and above is draining up into your armpits. So when you're talking about removing skin and you are cutting off that whole bottom part with all those vessels below your belly button and you're pulling skin down, we now have to reroute the fluid because those vessels that were meant to take all of the swelling from your dog ear, your belly button, your incision area, those aren't there anymore to take them down towards the lymph nodes because that skin's been cut off. Those lymph vessels have been taken away. So everything that's belly button and above has is now below the belly button. So we have to make sure that we're working with someone, an MLD therapist who understands how the pathway of the lymphatic system works, how swelling is supposed to travel, and now that your body has changed, how we need to adapt to make sure we can properly filter out in the right direction the dog ears from that area back into your body, back into your lymph system. So 
three things you need to help with your dog ears. One, somebody that knows MLD really well, that knows the lymph system really well, that can perform manual lymphatic drainage massage correctly for those areas. Two, proper foams to help with lymphatic stimulation and compression. And three, a proper compression garment, not a Spanx, not a stretchy something, and a binder that is not gonna cut into you. Now, if you have the foams, you can line the binder with the foams and make sure you're putting the binder low enough so that it's covering your hips and your dog ear area so that you're getting proper compression. So those can start being reabsorbed into the body. So to wrap this up, dog ears, from an MLD perspective, from a post-op care perspective, is a pocket of trapped fluid that, yes, can become permanent if your body starts healing around it and starts turning that into tissue. Two, lots of things they say that you can do for dog ears is going to depend on your surgeon, your surgery, and you. There is no one clear, true way of getting rid of dog ears. So either surgically or with the MLD massage, with compression, all of the different options that you have. I am bringing you the option of post-op from an MLD swelling perspective. And three, lots of ways to get rid of dog ears, manual lymphatic drainage, foams, compression, things like that. Preventing them also, making sure you have proper compression and foams in that area after your surgery. So if you are like three weeks out and you're super worried about your dog ears and you don't want them at all and you're freaking out about them, making sure you have someone that's explaining to you how compression works, how the foams work, that you're putting them on properly, someone that can really assist you with that. If you guys don't have anyone in your area that can assist you with that, that is well-versed in plastic surgery and the anatomy of the body and how healing should go, I offer virtuals. We can find you someone to do your MLD massage. I will explain to you how to find someone and how to vet them properly to make sure they're doing the right thing for what we need. Um, we will also make sure that you have the proper supplies and you're wearing them right. And I'll explain to you more about your specific type of dog ears, your case, how it happened, all of that stuff, and kind of be a partner to walk you through all this and give you all of the surgery detailed specific things for you and your complications. So I do virtuals, give the office a call, 732-841-0142. My scheduling coordinator, Alex, who everyone calls Happy Alex, will be able to set you up with an appointment with me. And then if you need your foams and the foams that you have are collapsing or you just don't feel like they're right or you want to learn more about the foams, amarepostopshop.com. The link is in our bio to that. The foams, the page for the actual foams, I have a video on there explaining how the foams work, what they do, all of that stuff. So check that out. If you need help, if you have questions, if you DM us, we will tell you the same thing call the office, 732-841-0142. If you want to come in for a session with me, I am located in New Jersey, in Highland Park and Elizabeth. So if you're in New Jersey or New York or Pennsylvania and you're local and you want to come in for a session, you can also call the office and Alex can get you set up with that too. So this was a little bit about dog ears. I hope this was kind of helpful to you guys. Again, it is subjective to your surgery but it is a pocket of swelling still. So there is still possibilities that it can go away. We get rid of them all the time. The longest that someone has had dog ears for that I've gotten rid of them was a year and a half. Um, because usually after a year, you guys go in for what, your one year follow up, you tell your surgeon and your surgeon's like, oh, well I can fix that for you. And they snip it off or they do a little extra lipo in that area, but then you still have swelling. So at that point, because it's not a tummy tuck, you're getting into a proper garment because it's just lipo. You're not using a binder. So at that point, they resolve. But that's kind of a lot of work to go through and being cut again and having a new cannula hole again. We want to try to do the swelling thing first to really figure it out first and see why it's there and if we are able to get rid of it. So my virtual consults are for that. If you have dog ears and you're like, I don't know, I really don't want to get surgery again. Maybe there's a way to fix this. Yes. There is, and we can help case to case, person to person, but there's always a way. So give us a call, 732-841-0142. We are in New Jersey, and that is all. Ashley with Amare. Bye.